through innovative solutions and advanced technologies, you can actually feed the world. Everybody always asks, like, what can you grow in an indoor environment? Yeah, anything. It's a plant, you know. It needs light, it needs CO2, it needs nutrition, water. You can, you can grow anything inside an in indoor environment. Like, how can such a young company spread like wildfire and essentially be present in so many countries? You're rolling? Hello and welcome, my name is David, I'm the CEO and founder of Smartcast and today I'm sitting here with Mark and Wim who are the other C-level board directors of Smartcast and we would like to kind of walk you along the path that led up to us participating at the ACTEC Indoor Innovation Summit in New York which took place a few weeks ago and you might have already seen content about it, some social media posts, we also mentioned it in our newsletter but I thought what better way to explain how we got here uh, on our long and uh, exciting journey than bring on the people who made it possible. So Mark, who are you and what do you do? Yeah. I'm Mark Kirby, Chief Commercial Officer at Smartcast and uh, I'm currently responsible for managing the setup of our new smart facility in Harlow in Essex which is in the United Kingdom. Um, I'm over here at the moment with David and Wim talking about what's been going on um, here at Schiphol. I'm, I'm Wim, I'm the CEO, um, and um, I'm mostly involved with capital raising. Um, so I uh, restructure bonds to raise uh, for projects and, and, and to fund David's uh, shenanigans. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's really uh, it's where I come in, um, talking to investors and um, structuring the products so we, uh, you know, we, have, uh, yeah, we can pay for, for, for the vision and, and uh, make it happen. Wim. It was actually you who brought, uh, brought on the opportunity of the uh, Indoor Act Tech Summit. Um, I'll let you talk about it in a second, but I just, I just want to have it said, which we already mentioned in, in, in one of our social media posts, is that just how much this means to me personally and to us as, as SmartCast. Um, wh when I started it all uh, uh, years and years ago, uh, even before the official launch of SmartCast, I always looked at this event as, as something, you know, where... I wish I could participate, I, I wished I could work for one of these companies or, or they could work with us, but I never dreamt about being one of them. It's about basically um, making sure that growing strawberries indoors is not anymore a pipe dream, it's not just some fantasy, and we can move on from lettuce growing indoors. Do you want to maybe say a few words about it? What kind of hardships and challenges have you faced so far? What, what do you think about when you think growing strawberries and mass, you know, at large scale indoors. I think one of the biggest, I think one of the biggest things around strawberries is the is the plant itself, right? You look at everyone focusing around growing lettuces or leafy greens indoors at the moment. There's a reason why there's so many people doing it. Um, but there's new technologies that are coming out, and there's new companies that are kind of emerging that have kind of looked at different different specific things around around growing leafy greens when you look at strawberries that isn't really happening right people are kind of seeing it as an opportunity but then it's then how do you take that opportunity and make it a commercial model and I think that's kind of where we've obviously learned through research and development that we've been doing that actually the variety is a big key thing um, but they're I mean they're really really sensitive um, I mean I've said to you before like when you look at the strawberry plants compared to anything else, you need to just make sure you get it right all the time. So our biggest judgment has been around the climate, um, choosing the right variety, um, and then a lot of stuff because of around we, with our recirculation of water and all the management systems that we use, that needs to always be right. Um, obviously, we're fortunate enough that we've built that opportunity and can't wait to have Harlow up and running now. So it's going to yeah. be exciting. One of the main themes of the conversation in New York was the evolution. Well, actually, I made it into the main theme. I kind of <laughs> hijacked the conversation uh, of the evolution of uh, smart agriculture and ag tech as a whole. Um, I don't know how you guys see it. I think pretty similar to me. But I cherish moving on to other varieties and, and other steps and, and more premium and more interesting plants not because of the profitable component, because let's be honest, obviously growing beautiful strawberries is more profitable than growing some lettuce than anybody can do. Uh, but it indicates something. It indicates a, a line, an evolution, a process 
and at the end of which everybody thinks that some super difficult, super uh, uh, convoluted plant will be. I think otherwise. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the evolution sit the most uh, basic <laughs> population feeders, rice, wheat, grains. But the challenge is making it well, and that's yes, and and that's that's your part, you know, making it the, the capex uh, makes the, sense. The funny thing is, uh, I was talking to an investor this morning, and then they asked, like, if this is already like going on, like ectec for for seventeen years, why is it not like uh, common, like because it's still new and it's already almost twenty years old, so it, it's really weird why it hasn't pushed through. Um, and um, yeah, I think that that's also because it's very expensive to to fund. Um, but I think also what you always say, like if a government would <laughs> invest in something like that, then it could speed up the process. Um, yeah, I think on, on more like nutritious, like, like rice and then and, and like potatoes, for example, it's something that, uh, that could help. Um, Absolutely. But uh, I think if you then, you would more look from like a food security perspective yes. and not from like profitability. Uh, perspective, so um, that's but, different. But then but you need government the future, funding, right? Yeah. I, I, I think that is the future. I think it's it's. Um, everybody always asks, like, what can you grow in an indoor environment? Yeah, anything. It's a plant. It's a plant. Yeah. You know, it needs light. It needs CO two. It needs nutrition, water. You can you can grow anything inside an in indoor environment. Will it be economically viable? That's a different question. If you put in a banana right here, we put some light on top of it. It's gonna grow. It's gonna be fine, but. It's not going to be in, in, a, in a good balance with the amount of money, time and effort spent compared to field farming yeah. as of now, right? So you raise a good point there with the 17, 20 years uh, ago status. So much has changed with uh, technologies, especially uh, LEDs, lightning, air handling units. I mean, the efficiency has become extremely fine-tuned compared to how LEDs were 20 years ago. So... Fast forward another five to ten years. I think it's going to go even faster because it's more on the agenda than it was like ten years ago. Exactly. Especially now, uh, f everybody uses in the food use food security on the uh, uh, in their marketing and in, in, in whatever. So it's uh, well now they do. <laughs> but it, it's a good thing because yes. it's uh, it creates more awareness. And I think if the awareness was there like ten years ago, everything would be in a lot faster or further than where it is now. Well, I always say that you shouldn't be constantly busy with smart cars, smart cars, smart cars. We're not really selling smart cars, smart cars, smart cars. We're selling the idea of food security. And if there are a ton of other companies that can join us in that mission, then they should. Mm. And that's actually what I experienced in New York at the Actec event as well. I met with Oishi, mm. uh, a Jones Food Company, uh, um, um, Pure Harvest, Plenty. We, we met with a lot of companies, Aero Farms as well. Um, and, and what I noticed was a positive surprise that they're actually very much interested in, in working together. They're very much interested in collaborating. And obviously, if that was all about money, it was all about the economic benefit, then, then we would be, you know, killing each other and, and jumping at each other's necks. But my uh, experience was actually very, very positive. It's funny yeah, because um, I think our, our business model is just very different um, yeah. because we look at it from like an open uh, view and we say okay what's good what's not good what, what can be better and what can be used to, to make something mm. great um, while a lot of people are focused on like okay this is a technology this is what we do but yeah okay Very that's tunnel vision yeah but it, it's uh, well it's probably a different interest but uh, then uh, that's good but I think from us we, we yeah we have an open open view and I think that's really helps us that really helps us in uh, in doing what we do I think that also kind of explains our exponential growth. It's, uh, it's something a lot of people don't fully grasp. They don't really fully understand, like how can such a young company spread like wildfire and essentially be present in so many countries and, and just do so many parallel projects. But I think it's, it's quite simple. We choose the path of least resistance, yeah. whether that's with finance, whether that's with project execution and offtake agreements, or simply making a vision that just works. Mm. You know, we didn't want to, compete with local smallholder farmers but the same way we don't want to compete with technology providers we want to we want to include them we want to work together because it's time like the contracts to buy are here now like yes. we don't have time to invest five yes. years in, in technology and develop it and uh, like uh, we, we want to sell now when selling is being profitable yeah. what i see from uh, a <laughs> yeah. but that's that's it it's, it's super true and, and, and what we see on the market is that a lot of these companies they they want to self-develop everything 
and they, they go into like dead end R and D uh, uh, tracks. They try to re engineer or engineer headlights. I mean, come on, there are so many great companies that have peaked, you know, massive multinational companies. Just buy their lights mm. and just, just focus your funds on, you know, on, on other parts of the. the yeah, business. I, do, I, do, I do think, though, I think that there are certain elements to certain components within growing systems that companies like, like us and others are doing is reinvesting into re-engineering certain things. Because again, I go back to what we're saying about strawberries, is that different varieties will need different types of growing. So it's not like you can just kind of turn it on and go, right, okay, that's gonna be the same for everything. So your actual, your actual automation around certain different uh, crops is gonna be completely different as well. So actually to build a one purpose for all just won't happen. So actually you need to have these different components to be able to grow different, different, different products. That's a conversation you have pretty actively with our Hungarian engineers. Yep. And you have recently hired also a robotic vision uh, engineer who's working precisely on that. Yep. And we had a lot of back and forth on should the plant go to the robot or the robot go to mm -hmm. the plant. Um, and what we see at these summits is that they choose the robot to plant approach. And what, what we learned from our engineers is that that's an inefficient and very costly approach, uh, not to mention safety hazard. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm very much interested. One, one uh, question that came up during the summit, uh, uh, well, actually during my panel talk, is that, okay, it took so and so many years to make the step from lettuce to, to berries, right? What do you guys think? How many years will it take to take the next step and what will it be? I mean, that's a very interesting, very interesting question, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's going to be, um, and, and you know, I'm, I'm not technical at all, but if you look from like a, an, an economic and, and like natural idea uh, purpose, it will be something that uh, that's now grown in Ukraine or Russia. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Because so that's what people need on, and uh, I think that's that's going to influence quite uh, the, the research maybe to, to wheat. I don't know if it's possible. Yeah. But how do how do we can how we can speed up that process because it's very much needed and it's like a very um, basic nutrient or like a... well we have researchers in Japan who are working on rice uh, integration into rice. indoor uh, farms which is obviously a huge thing mm. in, in in the far east uh, um, um, what do you guys think what is when when is the next step going to happen because you know it's also the pace of innovation that's accelerating it's not just that it's naturally happening. I um I think I think I think you've got I think there's going to be there's two I think there's two sides to this. It's either going to happen in the next five years or it's going to happen in twenty years, because people still you're still looking at tomatoes, you're still looking at bell peppers, you're still looking at other types of you know what I mean. The good old greenhouse the good business. Old, yeah, why exactly, change it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's still having that kind of evolution into indoor, and that's going to take time. So to even think about the basics, which, like you say, is that it suddenly it doesn't become economically fantastic. It becomes a priority. It becomes a, you know I mean, a food security service. That's when I think that you mentioned it and stuff like that about government level coming in saying, right, okay, finding a few people like us and others to say, we now need to create a bit of a consortium of people to say, right, you put your minds together and you work out how we can do this, and you've got five years to do it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not going to come, I don't think it will come through, you, know, you, you mean, people that are doing what they're doing at the moment. No, it probably needs to be like massive um, like funds or like uh, European investment funds or things like that that would, would go into it. I think the government itself, it, it takes it takes long um, because yeah. that's not 2030, it's 2050 uh, when they want to change things. It's uh, how do you see it from your sector, from the financial sector and, 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 and funds moving? Um, um, have you seen any differences? Have you seen any different behavior when it comes to families, family offices, PE, VCs? Uh? Massive, massively. Um, so I think there's uh, people are looking, uh, okay, you can go into infrastructure investment uh, from like uh, private equity firms or, or VCs or whatever, family offices. Uh, they they that's very much uh, a focus, like anything is sustainable. Um, but food is now more and more on the agenda. So they've got like LPs and investors asking for like, what is there? Uh, and if these guys are willing to invest in pre-revenue companies, then things are changing. Uh, and it's not like uh, 
millions, but it's probably billions that are in the market uh, for this uh, uh, for this sector. Um, so yeah, and that that goes from what we do to plant-based. Uh, because as a young company with no annual accounts, uh, getting into like, like that, a location yeah. like this, it, it's it's actually insane. Um, uh, we had funds, okay, that was a positive thing. Um, but it's what we always say, like you've got real estate, solar, like energy, and, and you've got us. And if these three come together, that's actually all you need to to make a difference. And if you can work together, uh, yeah, what I always, the, the, the thing, if you can't share, you cannot multiply, but you can multiply a lot faster if you work together and if you have the same goal. And uh, I think uh, that's a challenge that we have now. Uh, but. We're getting there. What I always think is, is cool is that um, whilst talking to, to, to investors or people, people actually become more aware about uh, about food, about food prices, because they start checking what they actually pay for like uh, half a kilo or like, of, of strawberries. And then they're like, oh, really? Is it because people are not always aware about what they, how much things cost. I wasn't. Uh, um, and then... Uh, yeah, you, you start consciously checking it. Yeah. And then they compare it to our data rooms and they're yeah. like, oh, wow, okay, so it's yeah. not too far off. That, yeah. that makes sense. That makes sense. Because that's also very important, right? We, we produce for volume with quality. Yeah. We're not producing premium, uh, unpayable, super expensive uh, pieces of art. Yeah. Yeah. Leaves. yeah. <laughs> but, like, here is one leaf of yeah. cola. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 50, bucks. 50 bucks, please. No. <laughs> so, so I think that's also a different strategy and a different mindset we have. Um, one thing I think is a, is a very important key takeaway from, from this video especially is not that we're trying to sell something or replace something or force uh, smallholder farmers out of the market. We're trying to raise awareness that through innovative solutions and advanced technologies, you can actually feed the world. So we would like to take you on a journey and we would like to ask you to join us and support us uh, by subscribing and liking and following our efforts because we're working really, really hard to make a little bit of dent in the food system and maybe revolutionize it. Thank you for your attention.